Hello, and this week's Friday video is problem four from the chapter three assignment. Now, there's some interesting things in problem four. It's probably the longest of the uh, problems, but the most important thing is here is again dealing with the data. So that's why I chose problem four. We'll see some more tricks in Excel to more easily deal with the data. So for A, we got a sample of 100 bank customer rating times given in that table. And it specifies here the mean and the standard deviation. The mean is 6.091 and the standard deviation is 2.857. Now years will differ because this is uh, generated data, but it's about that. Uh, here's a histogram. Um, we're going to have to click on eventually to answer this question. And then we've got the empirical rule. Uh, empirical rule says that approximately 68% of the data, 68.26, happens within one standard deviation of the mean, uh, about 95% within two standard deviations, and about 99.73% within three. So we're going to have to actually calculate the endpoints of those intervals. Uh, in C, we're going to estimate tolerance intervals containing all uh, specific values. And we're going to look to see how the percentages of the 100 waiting times actually fall into those intervals. Um, so that's what problem four is all about. First step, we're going to copy and paste the data into Excel. So this is just Control C since I have a, a, a Windows machine. Mac people do Command C. I'll go ahead and open up Microsoft Excel. And notice if I just hit Control V, just paste it in there, there's some problems. Problem one is that these in the G column, if you look really closely, there's an extra couple spaces there. Two spaces, in fact. And that really confuses Excel because numbers don't have spaces at the end. You're able to calculate the mean of all of this, but once you add that last column in, it, Excel is not seeing these as numbers. So we've got to get rid of these spaces. Now one is you can just click on that uh, and hit Backspace. Um, I just hit F2, and F2 allows me to directly edit within the cell, and then a backspace. That's rather quick. And there we go. Now everything here is a number. If you don't want to go through all of that effort, we may be, you may be able to use a different method. Notice up here in the ribbon, paste click on the down arrow, you got some options for paste. You can, and it'll show you what your, how it would look. Notice when you uh, highlight over this, eh, can't do two things at once. The numbers in the first column and the last column are left aligned. That indicates that these are not numbers because numbers are by default in Excel right aligned. We can go to Paste Special. Clicking on Paste Special brings up another window. We can uh, paste it as HTML, as Unicode text, or just as regular text. If you paste it as regular text, Excel is going to strip off everything that's not a number or a letter. So let's hit OK. And now you see everything is numeric. Everything is right aligned as it should be for numbers. That's one way of getting the data into Excel. Now let's look at this. It says that the mean and the standard deviation gives us the mean and the standard deviation. Let's just double check that we know how to calculate the mean and the standard deviation of the data. And we'll check that our data matches the, the book's data. So this is the function for mean is average. Open parenthesis. Make sure you start with the equal sign that tells Excel that you're going to be using a formula. Then highlight everything. Notice I'm highlighting things that aren't numbers. These five cells have nothing in it. Well, because it's got nothing in there, um, because it's not numbers, Excel is just going to skip over them when calculating an average. 6.091 is the average we got. According to the book, 6.091. Excellent. Uh, standard deviation, stdev.s, and it's .s because this is a sample standard deviation, not a population. If 
you had values from the entire population, you could use stdev.p.p for population. 2.85682, 2.8568 rounded up to 2.857. So far, so good. And while we're at it, might as well do the variance. It's var, and again, dot s because this is a sample. Highlight, close parenthesis. Now, <clears throat> now notice something. This is the variance. That's the standard deviation. If I would like to square the standard deviation, one thing I could do, notice I'm starting with an equal sign, highlight the cell, and then to square, I can just do caret 2 and enter. Notice how the square of the standard deviation is the same as the variance. The variance is defined as the square of the standard deviation. Or I could do the same thing showing that the square root of the variance is equal to the standard deviation. So it's the variance to the power of 1 half, which you could do is 0 0.5. So here's the variance to the power of 1 half, the square root of the variance, and there's the standard deviation. They're equal. There's other ways of getting the square root. You could do to the power of 1 half. You could do SQRT of the variance. Those are three ways of getting a square root, either SQRT to the power of 1 over 2, don't forget the parentheses, or to the power of 0.5. Okay, so I think we've, that one's played out enough. So we got the data in correctly. Now let's go to A. Histogram in figure 2.16 say about what the empirical rule should be used. Let's see. If we recall, we should not use the empirical rule if the data are highly skewed. This data looks pretty symmetric. So, in fact, it looks highly symmetric. I'm going to say that the empirical rule will work in this case. If it was highly skewed, either highly skewed left or highly skewed right, we should not use the empirical rule. But we have a nice little unimodal distribution. It is somewhat reasonable. B, use the empirical rule to calculate estimates of tolerance intervals containing 68.26, 95.44, and 99.73%. Essentially, we need to find out what x plus and minus s is, x bar plus and minus 2s, and x bar plus and minus 3s. Well, we know this is x bar, and we know this is s, and really we don't need any of the rest of that for now. So we'll set up a formula. This is going to be equal to x bar minus s. And this will be equal to x bar plus s. So that first interval is 3.23418. Round answers to three decimal places. 3.234. to 8.948. Um, x bar plus, I'll make this a little bit bigger so I can see it. x bar plus 2s. This is equal to x bar plus 2, I'm, let's go with minus, minus 2 times s. And this is going to equal x bar plus 2 times s. And we're going to round it to 3, so this will be 0.377 and 11.805. X bar plus 3s. X bar minus 3 times s. And that equals x bar plus 3 times s. So negative 
to 14.662. Double check that I typed everything in correctly. Now if you don't want to do the rounding yourself, you can have Excel do the rounding. Just highlight the cells and click on one of these two buttons. The left button increases the number of decimal places. The right button decreases. So if we want to do this to three decimal places, we just keep decreasing until we get three decimal places. Then we can just double check. 3.234, 8.948, 9.9, 11.805, negative 2.479, 14.661. Oops, I miscalculated. It's almost as if I planned that. Cool. Okay, so A and B are both done. It is somewhat reasonable, so let's go ahead and do the empirical rule. We get the intervals for the empirical rule. C is, does the estimate of the tolerance interval containing 68.26 of the waiting times provide evidence that at least two-thirds of all customers, again, it's evidence, not proof, stats is about evidence, not about proof, that at least two-thirds of all customers will have to wait less than nine minutes. Well, notice that the interval is completely less than nine minutes which means that there is strong evidence that at least 68.26% and in all reality a lot more is going to be less than 9 minutes. 68.26% of all the data should be between these two values. All of these values are less than 9 minutes so that at least 68.26% is going to be less than 9 minutes. Okay, and finally D. How do the percentages of the 100 waiting times that actually fall in the intervals compare to those given by the empirical rule? In other words, the empirical rule says that 68.26% should fall between these two values. What percent actually does fall between those two values? Well, let's go to Excel and try to do this. Notice there is no really easy way of ordering or sorting data that's in a block or there may be but no one's ever told me and I haven't figured it out and it's really fast to, to not have to do it and just do it manually so I'm going to highlight everything but that first column X which is uh, control cut uh, control X which is is cut and then V paste it down there and I'll just oh no that changed these numbers darn it which means that it changed the, you know, got to undo that. Control Z undoes. In Mac, that would most likely be Command Z. Okay, so how do I move this data without affecting these two values? Well, there's lots of ways of doing it. I'm going to highlight those two values. I'm going to copy, which is, again, Control C or Command C. Then I'm going to go over here to this paste function. And I'm going to select paste values, this first one. And now notice these are no longer, if you look up here, these are no longer formulas, they're actual numbers, which means I can move this data around and those values won't change. Good. Okay, so control X, control V, control X, control V. If you have a mouse and you're good at using mouse, you can highlight. And then when you get the crosshairs, you just m left click and drag. Take some practice. I will frequently miss my mark. So for me, I usually just control X, control V. Notice everything is now in order. So let's sort lowest to highest. And just glance through this, make sure everything looks to be in the right order. It does. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. 
So we need to figure out or count how many of these values are between 3.234, starting there, and 8.948. 8.948. That is 68 of the values. Since there's 100 values altogether, that's going to be 68 over 100 as the proportion, or 0.68 times 100 as a percent. What percent falls into x bar plus 2s? Well, the second one is x bar plus 2s. This is 0.377. So it starts there. 11.805. According to this, the count is 95. So 95 out of 100 times 100 percent. And then x bar plus 3s between a negative number and 14.661. That's all 100 of them. Now this was, in theory, supposed to be 68.26. It's pretty darn close. This, in theory, was supposed to be 95.44. That was pretty close. And this is supposed to be 99.73. That was really, really close. So yes, they are reasonably valid. Awesome. Now I'm going to submit this before I forget. Uh, I haven't done anything else, but I'm going to submit anyway. And that's going to be the end. Oh, I got 12 out of 50. Let's see what that means. OK, I, log I logged out because it took me so long to do this video. Oh, what's my password? Hopefully that was it. Seems to be it. How much was question four worth? It was worth six points. I got six points all together, so I got them all right. Awesome. Don't need to fix anything on four. So that was the end of this one. Notice that the most important thing in this video was getting the data into Excel. I showed you. One reason why this data was a little bit more difficult to get into Excel is when you highlighted it, you got some little spaces here on the right-hand side, which Excel read as, hey, that means this is not a number. So the key to dealing with that, again, was not just Control-V, but paste special and then as text. And that makes everything here a number, because when you just paste this text, what it does is it throws away everything that's not a number, a punctuation mark, or a letter. So hopefully this was helpful. Take care of yourselves. See ya.